Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. These shows are brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation as in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. Well, Heidi, we've got a really interesting show today because we are going to be talking to some people who are actually writers mm -hmm. prior to having their losses and have gone on to take that to new dimensions. Absolutely, Mom. We're going to be talking about active grieving, writing through grief. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we have two people on our show today, Herb Knoll. And hey, Anna. Herb. Hi, Herb. Hello. Glad uh, to see you. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And Anna Elizabeth. Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi, thank you. So, like you said, they both had losses and they've both gone on to transform their lives and write through their grief. Mm -hmm. um, Herb is the author of The Widow Widow's Journey. Mm -hmm. He lost Great his book. wife, Michelle, to cancer, and he has since remarried. In fact, I can show his book here, The Widow's yeah, like Journey. That. Great thing for men who've had a loss. Mm -hmm. And it says, helping men rebuild after their loss. Yeah. Great and book. he is also, Mom, the founder of the Widow Widower's Support Network. Ah, great. And he has co-authored a song called Love You Different. And we've been listening to it, and it's fabulous, and we're going to go out of the show with it, right? It's beautiful, and he did it with some musicians in Nashville. It is a gorgeous song. We'll hear a little bit more about that later. Yes, and then we are also going to be joined by Anna Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Hi, Anna. Hi. And she lost her son, Gavin. Mm. Um, it was a very difficult and complicated delivery, and he was a beautiful baby. Um, you'll see pictures of him today. And let's see, she's written Digging for the Light. Uh -huh. And we have right her book here, also. Yeah. Digging for the Light, A yes. Woman's Journey from Heartache to Hope. Yes. Fantastic. And this is about her journey from losing her child, and really a fabulous read. And, and, and Anna is all about hope, and so are we. So we are definitely on the same page and both of our guests are. And she is the developer of the five facets philosophy on healing. So there's five different facets that she, she talks about. And she, they both on YouTubes for us. Yeah, fabulous so, YouTubes. So if you want to see more of them, go on to the YouTube also. Yes, go on to Open to Hope and Google their names and you'll see other things that they've talked about. So uh, welcome. Welcome. And I, let's start with you and talk a little bit. You, you and your husband own a farm, right? We do. And you, we, and you were, were you farming when uh, you lost your child? Were you working in that area? We, we were in the early stages of developing the orchard when we lost Gavin, mm. and then we had three other children. And that was what, Gavin, you lost him about 20 Gavin years ago? Gavin was 27 and a half years ago, yeah. May yeah. 11th of 1990. Uh -huh. um, and then we had two miscarriages and two more complicated, wow. three more complicated but successful pregnancies. Wow. Um, so you, so been through a lot. Yeah, and I know we talked last night and you said we, when you delivered Gavin you were 100% you were sure you were going to have a very healthy child in your life and mm -hmm. you didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was one of those picture perfect pregnancies. Yeah. There were no morning sickness, nothing, and everything just fell apart. Um, right after delivery he had complications during delivery that he wasn't able to survive. Wow. Um, and we're going to talk about how you went on to develop your philosophy. I want to get mm -hmm. to you, Herb, too. You lost uh, your wife. Lost my wife, Michelle, yes, 10 uh -huh. years ago. 10 years ago. And you, what, she died of cancer, is that right? Pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic mm -hmm. cancer, painful. Right. Very, and very young, 52 years yeah. old. Wow. Yeah, what a journey <clears throat> you were both on. Yeah. So let's, let's get to your, why you uh, started writing, and um, then we'll get back to Herb. Yeah. Uh, you, you decided, as you were telling me, that you wanted to know how you can get out of this grief, how, can you, how you can be happy again? Absolutely. I remember in the early days after Gavin's death, I was still in the hospital, and I had this thought that I did not want to spend a lifetime mourning him. Mm -hmm. And I say I didn't know what that meant, what it looked like on the other side, or how I was ever going to get there, but I knew what I didn't want. And then after the series of other losses in a seven year period following Gavin, I had the two miscarriages, uh, two complicated pregnancies, a third complicated pregnancy. Mm -hmm. uh, my youngest child actually wasn't breathing when he was born. Wow. Wow. So you went his on. Pick, his pregnancy mirrored Gavin's. Mm, Perfect all the way through and then but they were prepared. Right. They they were prepared and so his outcome was yeah. better. But I did um, after all those losses, severe depression, the one question that drove me is how is it that some people can go on to survive and live happy, fulfilled lives mm -hmm. following tragedy while others succumb to drugs, despair, a life avoid, or 
suicide. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar to you, Herb? Were yes, you wondering Herb. the same thing? Was that what now? Wondering the same type of thing? Yeah, it was, it was a different journey for me. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a place, I was in Texas, San Antonio. I had no family, no support network. I had just relocated to the area. Oh, wow. And I didn't know what I was going to do tomorrow. Uh, as it turned out, I ended up leaving my career and dedicating my life to In helping. banking, right? Pardon? You left a career in, in banking. banking? Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was interesting that you wrote a book called, let's see, I've got it down here. Uh, what was your, oh, your first book, Writing Through the Executive, something? The, the Total Executive. The Total yeah. Executive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> How I does wrote one... that many years ago. Yeah, and it was a very successful book. Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, and it talked about corporate etiquette, it talked about dress, it talked about how to just stand out in a crowded room of blue suits wow. and uh -huh. distinguish yourself. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. So mm -hmm. you knew you could do it. You knew you could write a book because you'd written a book. Right, right. And so. I used to write newspaper columns and stuff. And right. So, so you went from there. And you were a writer yourself all the time, right? You, I was. It was you'd just always journal myself. I journaled. I wrote poetry. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. And then after these losses, I, it became more intentional in serving the grieving now, community. Now with your book, uh, Dig Digging for the Light, did you use the things you'd already written? Because I know people are watching the show and wondering, can they use their journaling and that kind of thing? Is that what you did? I did, actually. I incorporated. So this is a memoir that takes the reader through that seven-year period of those losses. But it's a reflective memoir that captures the things that had hope and then ultimately incorporates the pieces of how I, I transitioned. Mm -hmm. um, but I incorporated pieces of that journal writing because so people could do that so, and keep journals. Mm -hmm. Do you use a journal here? Uh, but you use the that. reporter kind of thing, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I did some of that, but I also uh, created a 13-page single-space questionnaire wow. that I sent out to widowers all across the country, and I had enough of them to respond back to me with their very candid responses mm -hmm. that that allowed me to distinguish my my writings from other things that I might have done otherwise. Uh -huh. And you took nine years to do your research, right? Yeah, nine years. That's amazing. Uh, we researched the book. Yeah. And I had 15 subject matter experts from clergy to psychologists to wow. clinical psychologists, three attorneys, a rabbi, a Catholic priest, two Protestant ministers. Oh my uh, and they all donated their time and stuck with me for nine mm -hmm. years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Incredible. I, mean, yeah, that's... I was flattered. Right. So, so two different approaches. One a little softer, and you do a lot of blogging and all that kind of thing right now. I do right now. It's, it's now, very yeah. Now I want to ask you both. What would you suggest to people who you've got your steps who are trying to get out of grief, who are trying to move on? What What are your takeaways from your book? Uh, so this book actually is just is just the memoir, and the the main takeaway from that is hope. Mm -hmm. The one I'm working on right now, which is the introduction of the five facets philosophy on healing that helps people get in touch with their five facets and how to make them work for so, them. So give us so, the facets. So the five facets are the academic, emotional, physical, social, and spiritual <coughs> sides of the self. And they actually exist in a hierarchy. And at the top of that hierarchy is one of those facets that causes you, 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 all of us then to drives our suffering and our success. Mm. And so the work actually helps people to understand all of the dynamics then that drive that and how to, to drive the suffering and the success and how to get them in touch with that and then use it to their advantage to move forward in whatever life adversity they have. I love that. Yeah, very great. How about Herb, what's your takeaway for the widowers from your book and uh, what have what you What I learned? discovered over the nine years is that men have a very significant reluctance to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Primarily because, I believe, because when they're very young, they're told boys don't cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they hold everything in. Mm -hmm. And they tell people silly things like, oh, I'm fine, leave me alone with my thoughts. When in reality, they're not fine at all and they're extremely vulnerable. Uh, so their suicide rate is three or four times greater than the married man. They have an increased rate of diabetes and hypertension mm -hmm. and other ailments. They have financial problems. Let me say something about the suicide. What people don't realize is the highest rate of suicide, we always think it's teenagers or whatever. No way. It's a men over 60 living alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And men are frankly, when they're married, they're lost when the lady has gone out of their life. Wow. The ladies keep us healthy. <clears throat> the ladies keep us social. They control the social calendar. Uh, they give us purpose. 
Men need purpose. So mm -hmm. when they when they run into a wall, like the loss of a loved one, they need they don't need, frankly, a lot of theory or seminars or a grief workshop. What they really need is answers. Mm -hmm. And what I hope my book did with the 40 men that contributed and the 15 experts is that we, I want to stimulate their thinking. So they may not subscribe to the best practices that these men offered, but maybe if they took a best practice, turned it around and painted a different color, suddenly it would work for them. Mm -hmm. So I want to stimulate their thinking so that they realize mm -hmm. that, like me, I didn't think I had a future, frankly. Uh, mm -hmm. I never thought I would love a second time. Mm -hmm. And it turned out I have a very fulfilled life and a beautiful wife. And, and we've got a picture of her mm -hmm. that we're and, showing. And, yeah, I love that. And I don't care how dark the clouds are for right. the gentleman they can be bright once again. Mm -hmm. So do not lose hope. And talk about your song a little bit that we're going to play at the end of the show. You wrote some yeah. music that connects um, with everything you're talking about. At, at the time, it was about eight years ago that I wrote it, I was contemplating would I ever fall in love again? Mm -hmm. Is that even possible in the cards for me? And I thought, well, if, I, if that ever was, was to happen, perhaps it will happen with a widow. Because after all, I'm not 21, mm -hmm. and uh, given my age, I might meet a widow. So I decided to write a song where a widower is singing to a widow. And the storyline, like your listeners will hear, are things like, I'm not asking you to forget him. I wouldn't even try. I know how you feel because I lost my angel too. Mm -hmm. But I will love you different. Right. And it won't take anything away from the love that I had for the woman that was in my life before. And to my delight, some of my friends in Nashville went in studio and cleaned up my lyrics a little bit and recorded the song, and it's getting great reviews. I, I love that, and I love the idea of it because you can, your heart is very big. We can love and we can love again. And you know, when you remarry, your, your spouse is not <clears> competing with someone that you love that died. You love in different ways, and you, love, you can love both of them. Mm -hmm. So. Um, actually, I run into that sometimes yes. with some of the men that I help and uh -huh. the families that I help. There were three gentlemen who backed out of participating in my book. Mm -hmm. So my editor very astutely suggested that I contact them and find out, why did you back out? Well, the first gentleman said, it's too painful to talk to you, mm. reliving all those bad days. Yeah. The, the second gentleman, it was funny, he said, my, the new lady in my life doesn't want to hear the name of my deceased wife ever spoken. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I told him to get a new girlfriend. Uh, I, that's good advice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but you know what comes up for me on this is you've lost a spouse, but Anna, a child is the same way. When you lose <clears throat> a child and then you have other children, right. I mean, how can they be the replacement children right. for that child? And it's actually one of the things that I write about often. I just, just posted a blog post recently about mm -hmm. that and is how it's different. We, we love differently, we lose differently, we heal differently, we grieve differently. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love what you do, we have in common, is my work inspires people to find insight within themselves. Mm -hmm. Because all of us are going to heal and grieve differently. And what works for you may mm -hmm. be completely wrong for me, yeah. and vice versa. And so I always say, take a, a cross section of everything that people have things that you find and if this little piece of what Gloria has works for you then use that and if this little piece from mm -hmm. Heidi and this little piece right. from Herb use that to create your own sort of database of and toolbox of things that you need for yourself right you know, one thing we were talking a little bit about here, is, uh, we're showing some pictures on the show, and I just want to do a practical thing. What do you do about kids' pictures, pictures of the babies? What do you do about your uh, wife who's died's pictures? What do you do with her stuff? What do you do with, you know, the baby stuff? How do you remember? I mean, how does it, how does it all work? Uh, actually, I, I've done some work in that area. And some of the things, some of the suggestions made to me by the men that were participating with me uh, included have a day where you cook your wife's favorite recipes and everybody participates in the kitchen mm -hmm. and everybody brings a story to the table. Valentine's Day is a very tough mm -hmm. period for mm -hmm. people who have lost a spouse. And children too because kids get of Valentine's course. out. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Ex exactly. So there's, um, I recommend that the pictures of the spouses be front and center. There is a gentleman in my book who lost his wife in Afghanistan. She mm -hmm. was in the Air Force and she passed away. Uh, they had three children, 
And then he met a woman who lost her husband in Iraq. Mm -hmm. They together have five children. Mm -hmm. wow. And they actually celebrate the birthdays of their deceased spouses. They make sure that they stay in touch with the in-laws of the deceased spouses. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean, they, so, they, it's amazing. so moving what they did. Uh, the lady is the only woman I interviewed for my entire book. Mm -hmm. because she was so impressive mm -hmm. and yeah. so mature about the loss that both of them experienced. That's mm -hmm. fabulous. Wow. With the uh, people that I work with, with that lose children, um, that's all over the place. Now me, I only had two pictures of Gavin mm -hmm. that fortunately my nurses had the foresight to take because wow. he yeah. died. It was an emergency C-section. Yeah. I was out. He died while I was under mm -hmm. anesthesia. Um, so I have those two pictures. I think I sent yes. one of them and to we you. Got them on the yeah. um, but I, there are some. So many people are different. Some people don't want them around, and other people want them everywhere. And the industry today really has come a long way. There are many artists mm -hmm. who are actually doing sketches and portraits and recreations of children and there some of them if for miscarriage even there are they're creating what they believe this child would look like based mm -hmm. on the family portraits it's amazing yeah, I've seen but I always encourage people I don't know if you do her but I encourage people do what feels right mm -hmm. for you again that what's yes. right for one is wrong for another whatever you are comfortable with I have Gavin's picture I have a a little stand with four mm -hmm. spots and I have a recreation of that picture in there with my other three living children. Mm -hmm. um, I also advocate that we are the sum of our parts. Right. So everything that we've experienced in life, however long we've been on earth, contributes to who we are today and hopefully who another would love one day. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's uncomfortable with that, I don't frankly uh, I couldn't support that very enthusiastically. I, right. I think mm -hmm. it's uh, it's not realistic. The one gentleman who told me that his wife didn't like, uh, his new girlfriend didn't like listening about his, his wife, they had been married for 30 years. Right. How, how do you dismiss 30 right. years of your life yeah. and even accidentally bring up her name? Mm -hmm. It's just not uh, mature enough. Right. right, and we all need, we need supportive people. I mean, that's, we need that support. We need supportive yeah people yeah. in our lives and ways that work for us. And I totally agree with both of you, but the only thing I would say is don't have more pictures of the deceased person than you do have of the living people in your life. Because right. for example, for siblings, we count pictures. Yep. And if there's like 40 <laughs> pictures of Scott and two of me, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> and I would say the same thing for people that are remarried. Um, I am all for incorporating the people that have died in our lives. I think it's really important. So just don't, just have a, ba remember and have a balance. Even if the people say they don't care, we actually do care. <laughs> right, so, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Our friend Carol Scabelli, who is a comedian, yeah, has talked mm -hmm. about dating and all that kind of thing. And uh, when you bring the guys home, do you have a picture of your ex, of your husband who's died <laughs> sitting on the mantle, or you know, do you run around the house and stick him away? Or <laughs> she is hysterical. She is. I had the good fortune and pleasure of meeting her, and yeah. she is yeah. but, just. But I do believe I totally agree with what you're saying. We need to incorporate the people into our lives forever in a different way. Mm -hmm. And people need to be okay with the fact that they're still a part of our lives in a new and different way. That's right. true, but there's another issue too, and it's with the loss of a child too, and a spouse is what if you ask somebody to move into the house with all your stuff, right. with all your ex you need a balance. stuff, mm -hmm. and it's all sitting there, and uh, you know, how, what do you do about that? And people who leave their children's rooms, you know, intact forever and ever, and you know. Uh, you know, when is enough, you know, when do we move on and how? Moderation. Yeah. yeah. And maybe limited to certain rooms. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it is, and it's different for yeah. everybody. Some people leave the nurseries intact until they have another child. Mm -hmm. Some people want everything immediately. And I love the word that you say, balance, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I really focus on. My work is focused on healing, and for a long time, I think we talked last night, I avoided the grief industry because I didn't want people to feel like, oh, you have to move on or dishonor mm -hmm. your grief. And the first of my five steps of healing is to choose grief. But oh, what I say that. is... Talk about choosing is, grief. That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah so choosing grief. In, in this society, in this culture, and for everybody watching, you know this, 
you have three to five days of bereavement leave. Mm -hmm. And then you're expected to go back to work. Get be, you're running a, a, a bank, a company. Yeah. You have to go back to work no matter what you're doing. Put on your game face. Be and, happy. And how, <laughs> how do you do that? Yeah. So I say, again, create that balance in your life. I teach people, choose what grief you need. When you mm -hmm. feel sad, let people know you're sad. Honor that grief. Yeah. If you need to cry, go cry. If you're at work and you need to go into the bathroom, <coughs> then take that 15 minute break mm -hmm. that you're entitled to and go into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Cry, do whatever you need to do. Take deep breaths. I teach meditation. Mm -hmm. um, do what you need to do, but honor your grief. And at some point in time, People will, they start asking, I want something more. I want yeah. something different. What else is out there? And I say, the lens of my work is on how we heal in active grief and beyond bereavement. But the lens of healing doesn't take away from grief, but we need to balance that mm -hmm. because there's so much focus on grief. And I think we need more of the introductions on the fact that we can heal. Even yeah. while we're actively grieving mm -hmm. and choosing grief, there are things that we can do to heal in the moment when we have crisis. When we're standing in the grocery store and a song comes on and we're overwhelmed, and how do I hold it together how until I can get to my car? How do you, because that's a big one. Um, so actually, the basic, what I teach people, the basic yeah. meditation is breathing and Eckhart okay. Tolle and a lot yeah. of the, you focus on your breath, and instead of um, the count to ten, because yeah. in in the video that I did for the webinar for um, the International Grief Institute, mm -hmm. I talk about this. There's the count to ten, and people are going one, two, three, <laughs> four. Yeah. It's like got to get to ten, yeah. and it it's counterproductive. And so I always say, just focus on your breathing. Mm -hmm. Breathe in to the count of three and out to the count of three. And Eckhart Tolle yeah. says, when you're focused on the breathing, you can't be thinking about anything else. And if you try it, it really yeah, is Yeah, breathing is true. powerful. So, and Herb, so, what yeah. about the guys? Yeah. How do they con to get, keep it under control? You think they can? <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, I worry, about, I worry about them. and walk it off, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, okay. John and I are really challenged. Yeah. Very much so, mm -hmm. because of how the, the American culture yeah. has treated them since birth. Yeah. Uh, there are two things that I recommend to all people who are grieving, regardless of gender. Number one, if you believe in a higher power, mm -hmm. turn to that person. Mm -hmm. uh, I will candidly tell you that I could not have survived the periods of stress that I went through, the grief that I went through, without my, my Lord. Mm -hmm. The second one is also very important, and that is to see a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot handle that kind of stress for that, if, particularly if you're a caregiver, mm -hmm. for a long period of time mm -hmm. and not do some damage to yourself. And right. the problem with caregivers is they tend to dismiss their aches and pains mm -hmm. in favor of the person who's really sick. And sometimes they even precede the person who's yeah. sick in yeah. death. Yeah, your sister. Often, my sister. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I know one gentleman who died within 24 hours or so of the, mm -hmm. his wife. So I recommend that everybody go see a medical doctor and hopefully the medical doctor refers them to a mental health professional also. Mm -hmm. When my wife was sick, uh, we were living in Nashville, and I went to Vanderbilt Medical Center while she was alive. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the psychologist to tell me I was properly anchored, mm -hmm. that I'm thinking clearly, that I'm giving her the best possible care I can. After she passed away, we were living in San Antonio at that time, and I saw another uh, psychologist. And that psychologist was very helpful to me in sorting things out. But unfortunately, a lot of the men have health problems. In fact, there's one survey that came out that 65% of people who lose a spouse will have a life-threatening illness within one year. Wow. wow. So everybody who's watching this show, listen to that and listen to these yes. two guys. Get their books. Where do we find you? What's your website? Uh, you can find me at the5facetsofhealing.com. Amazon.com or at WidowerSupportNetwork.com. All right. Well, thank you Excellent. guys for being on the show, and I hope everybody's inspired by these two because you can see you can write your memoirs yes. and you can uh, do surveys and all sorts of wonderful things to help you along on your grief journey. Yeah, absolutely. There's support out there, and if you've lost hope, please lean on ours. Please lean on our guest today until you find your own. And now we're going to hear Herb Son. Yes. All right. Thank you. Herb. Thank you, You're and thanks welcome. for being for on the song. show. It's been thank fabulous. And thanks, Anna. Thank you. Yeah.
after true. 